well, let's go ahead and move on to topic number four uh kind of dealing with streaming again mm. and that is with hbo max it looks like their their subscriptions have doubled ah, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it looks oh. like their subscriptions have doubled oh. with the wonder woman 1984 oh. i got the report right here <laughs> from deadline it says oh. hey, HBO Max activations double in Q4, that's quarter four, to 17.2 million, driven by Wonder Woman 1984. Uh, the number of overall domestic subscriptions to both regular HBO Max and HBO Max reached 45.1 million, which, uh, actually, let me start up here. AT&C said that the number of activated subscriptions to streaming service HBO Max doubled in the fourth quarter to 17.2 million, compared to its third quarter, partly due to the release of- I Wonder like that comment. I like that comment. Okay. Are you you said like it or highlight? No, it? highlight that comment, Mara. Uh, okay. Highlight that comment. Okay, okay, okay. The number of overall domestic subscriptions to both regular HBO and HBO Max reached 41.5 million, which the company said was two years ahead of its initial forecast and up to 34.6 million in the 2019 quarter. Before the May 2020 debut of HBO Max, AT&T said it has a five-year goal was to reach 50 million total U.S. subscribers and between 75 to 90 million globally. Um, while HBO Max costs $15 a month for direct retail subscribers, existing HBO subscribers are entitled to activate their subscriptions at no extra cost. AT&T struggled in early going with driving those conversions, especially with rival launching for cheaper streaming alternatives, hence like Disney uh, and Disney Plus and uh, Netflix. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab this first. I mean, I think this is cool, but they're still nowhere remotely close to their competitors that I mentioned with uh, Netflix and Disney. Uh, I'm really interested in seeing what Eman has to say because he said, uh, highlight that comment. Yeah. He's uh, talking about Mara Sharif, Mar I think. Yeah. Right, right. But uh, I mean, th this is this is cool. I mean, th this is good. I wonder how everything is going to go here on out. But uh, one of the things that HBO Max failed to me is the marketing. Uh, I thought this was a horrible marketing job when it launched. It's like, okay, people already have HBO Max, and then you had HBO Go, and then you had HBO Now, the and then you're talking crazy. about HBO Max. It's like people like, I already have HBO. What the hell yeah, is this? Was I, was I was very, very confused. And so they and that was why they did it. That's why they did it, B. Avery. They needed to consolidate all those properties into one. Yeah. Right on, right on. But, but they should have just yeah. go ahead, done go ahead. a name change. Instead of just adding on, you know what I'm saying? Like, just convert HBO Now to HBO Max or whatever. But anyway, yes, Ms. Mara's comment was exactly what I was going to say. I don't care if something doubles. I, like I said earlier on, subscriptions are fickle. They're not sustainable. Look at what happened with Disney, who's already like, what, second after Netflix or whatever? After the first season of Mandalorian, what happened? significant drop in subscribers because Disney didn't have nothing else to really contend with that. They it's do not, now. I mean, now they do, but why, <laughs> why is that? Because they added a significant amount of content. HBO Max is nowhere close to the amount of content that, I mean, it's definitely not touching Netflix, but it's no, not no, even close the, to the Disney Plus right content. No, the quality, quality the is there. Quality they is have there. the quality. But if you sit here and tell me like, man, I could watch all the HBO Max in like a month versus I could watch all the Disney Plus in like a year versus Netflix. Like, yo, I've had Netflix since it started and I'm my queue is still ridiculously high. I'm not going to finish Netflix no time soon. But that's all I'm saying. The subscriber count is something that's nice, but it's not sustainable. It's not the only reason they even like really announced that is to boost up their investors and to get their value up or whatever. 17 million. So y'all yeah, might y'all might lose nine million after that whack denzel movie like <laughs> they, might, so? but they might but here's the thing here's the thing we we know we know that they're going to keep pushing out these first run movies these big ones like kong and and and, and black you know uh judas and the black messiah they're going to be pushing all these big first run movies people are going to keep coming to watch and the people that are already there are going to stay so they can watch some of these movies especially since they're not charging a premium for them we already know that disney's going to come out like with what was it raya and the something dragon and they're going to charge a premium for that movie so so when you look at some of them, like like uh, like um, HBO or, or excuse me, uh, yeah HBO Max, 
they're they're not charging premiums. People are going to come and they're going to say, okay, for 15 bucks, that's how much it costs me to go to a movie every, you know, that once a month or one movie. If I can get that and pay it in a month and I can see all this stuff that's on there and they're going to keep adding content. I think what's going to happen is, is, yes, we already have the Bond movies, the Top Gun movies, all those movies that are actually already finished and people are bidding on them. But what's going to happen is you're going to start seeing some of these other people like like HBO Max and Disney. They're going to just start bidding on scripts the way Netflix does. Netflix is just going to start bidding on scripts right from the beginning and say, we want to produce this for our platform. And and then they're just going to and they're just going to take it. It's going to be a direct to streaming property right from Jump Street. We're going to see a lot more of that like we might see the next Bond movie or the next uh, or the next, uh, you know, Top Gun that never even had the chance of going to the theater because Netflix or somebody bid on it right up front and won. I'm going to tell you exactly the one thing that you leaving out of this. And Brandon, my fault. I should have sent you the article. But basically what we're not talking about and what will happen because it's already happening. Everybody ain't about to sit here juggling all these streaming platforms. The cost is going to keep going up. And I've also said that there's a hidden cost that a lot of people don't realize. Um, and that hidden cost is the fact that like, yeah, you might be paying, let's just say, 30, 40 bucks for these streaming platforms. But then you got to pay for the Internet to carry all that. And mm -hmm. your Internet provider will. I'm, a, I'm telling you, as the technology 4K, 8K, all those K's start going up, <laughs> so will your Internet bill because it takes more bandwidth to keep up with the streaming platforms. So what's going to end up happening? Them co Internet companies ain't about to sit here and be like, oh, let's just get this to you for free. They're going to keep raising up your bills. So hey, you think as the solution to that is going to be let's pay $20 a pop to go to the no. movie? Okay, my salute. I think what people are going to realize is they're going to be like, damn, my cable bill is like $300. My internet stream, I got seven internet streaming platforms. I need to cut some of these because they're going to, now Netflix is probably going to stay because they got good content and quality. Um, Disney might stay because they're going to pump it up in the next two years. HBO Max is probably going to have to compete with whoever else is trying to play catch up. And people are going to be doing musical chairs with these streaming platforms. And sooner or later, it will make more financial sense to sit here and be like, hmm, do I want to keep on paying 15, 30, 40, 50 dollars per month for these platforms that I'm not even having the time to watch versus maybe I pay that 40 bucks one time in the next three months to go watch a movie I really want to go see. That's going to be the real difference because with this whole race with streaming platforms, it's going to hit a financial plateau to us, the average people. We can't afford all this stuff. And yes, I do think you're right about the uh, having tiered platforms and stuff because they're going to have to do that. People are not going to be able to afford having all this stuff. And it's going to be like cable all over again where you're going to have like all these different tiers and it's just like we're going to have to make real decisions. It's nice right now because we're in the infancy of all this streaming stuff. But just like anything else in technology, it's going to go up and it's going to keep developing faster than we can afford and keep up with. E-Man, I think what's going to happen is they're going to force what's going to this situation is going to force people back into cable. Like I, I have agree. people ask me I all agree. the time. They say, oh, I yep. want a cord cut. I want to do this and I want to do that. I tell them yep. most of it for most people, cord cutting is not worth it because right. you're paying most of your money. If you have a hundred and fifty dollar cable bill and yeah. you're paying 80 bucks for for fast enough cable so that you could so that are for fast enough Internet so you can stream the stuff. And then you pay the other money for streaming services, you're back to where you were. Yeah. But if you have HBO, while you have cable, if you like, for me, I have cable yeah. and I have HBO. And so HBO on my, through my cable company, it's 10 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. Now with that, you also get HBO Max, which means I pay 10 bucks a month for HBO Max instead of 15. Instead of 15. And, yeah. and really, and, and I also get the, you know, I also get HBO on my TV set. So, I mean, it's even less no. than that when you look at the overall value proposition. No, now, you're right. You're right. If Disney, if Disney Plus decides, you know what, we're going to do something similar. If you go, if you have cable and you add Disney onto your cable package, we're going to give you Disney Plus free 
And you only have to pay the premium if you want those premium first run movies. Right. That's how they could do it. That way they can increase their, their they can increase their subscriptions on the cable side mm-hmm. and get people to pay that extra premium on the on the app side. Yeah. They, they're just gonna have to change their business model. I don't think it says not gonna happen. It's just one, it's just you're talking about a system that has been set up for decades and it's just going to take time for these executives who a lot of them are just antiquated in their thinking are just going to have to suck it up and deal with it or eventually the board's just going to simply say your ass is old and you're thinking you have to go (laughs) we're going to bring in some 35 year old ceo and they're going to make all the changes that we want made no i agree i agree like honestly um you know you already have these partnerships with different companies where, you know, if you sign up with Verizon, then you get Netflix for free. Or if you sign up with T-Mobile, you get this and this, you know? So I do think that that's going to be like real um, strategic for them to do. Um, And unfortunately on our part, as the average Joe out there, like we have to figure out these different combinations because again, them costs are about to go up. They're not about to go down. You're, I'm just saying, you're going to have to be strategic, and we're gonna we're gonna be out here feeling like these couponers, you know, out here looking for deals everywhere, <laughs> just to be like, oh man, yo, I got this, you know, T-Mobile Tuesday <laughs> with my Netflix, but I switched over from Sprint to Verizon so I could save on HBO. Like, it, you gonna have to juggle some things. Right, right, right. And, and here's, and here's and the other thing. Uh, my, my fault. Earlier, when you were talking about highlight that comment, was you talking about somebody in the chat? Yeah, 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 it was fine. I'm we got it. Sure, man. Uh, we got my, it. I see her name, Mara Charisse. I, yeah, I, it's clicking now. My 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 fault. My sister, if I or I don't I don't know if that's a male or female. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, my my fault. Uh, call me out next time. Uh, but go ahead, Larry. Go ahead. So, E man, here's the thing. You were you were talking about that that subscribers are fickle and they may cancel their subscriptions. But I think here's the thing that we're going to see a lot of people do, which they've already started doing, and we're going to probably see more of it, is they're going to simply offer a yearly rate, an annual rate that's a reduced price. I, Disney Plus does it, I believe, where if you pay for a whole year subscription, you get it, I think, for three or four bucks less than you would if you paid monthly. You know, I did it with uh, Hulu. I pay a dollar ninety nine a month for Hulu. I pay twenty four dollars for the year. You know, where normally it's five ninety nine. So I, we're gonna see a, we're gonna see more people do that to lock people in. And once you have your subscriber base locked in, most people how that, how that, how that work out? How that work out for uh, the phone companies though? You know, like, like sometimes people are afraid of like locking themselves into like long term. People could not wait. People could not wait to get back into contracts. Now, now with the phone companies, they're getting people into contracts, except they're worse because now they're locking people into these 24 month contracts by letting them buy phones on installment plans where they're paying the full price of the phone, except now they, they're not getting any discount. They're just paying the full price of the phone where back in the day it used to be, okay, you're on a two year contract and your thousand dollar iPhone used to cost 500 bucks. Now your thousand dollar iPhone costs a thousand dollars except you just get to pay for it over the course of two years. So there are people who still went back to contracts. They're just not getting as much benefit out of it. Man, I've, I've, I've seen the no contracts be a little bit more beneficial. Like, yo, you can come and go as you please. Now, you still got to pay your bills, but, you know, you're not going to be <laughs> Yeah, if you're willing to pay contract. for it, you're right. If you're willing to pay for your phone in cash up front or you bring an unlocked phone into the deal. But if not, like a lot of people, they come in and they say, okay, get a new iPhone and, and you know, and we'll give it to you for, you know, we'll spread your payments out over the course of 24 months. That's great. But you've yeah. locked yourself into a two-year contract and you're still paying full price for the phone. Where in the old contracts, you was being locked into a deal for 24 months, but you at least got your phone for half price. 